Welcome to a special PHP panel in the spirit of community, openness, and transparency. My, <laughs> so weird. I had that all worked out in my head. <laughs> uh, my name is Eric Dan Johnson, and with me today is Oscar uh, Marita. Oscar, please Hello. speak. I'm sorry. I should have said that. When I say your name, it's you it just kind of speak so that people can match the name to the voice. I would appreciate it. Eric Mann. Hi, everybody. Tom Wrightout. Good afternoon. John Congdon. It is a good afternoon. And That's Sarah weird. Goldman. Good morning, PHP Ugly. <laughs> that was okay, way better uh, than mine. <laughs> so we are here in the special PHP panel. Uh, to discuss some recent security events around the PHP core code base. And I guess to kind of get the conversation started, Sarah, as part of PHP internals, do you want to give us a rundown of A, exactly what happened, and B, should anybody be worried that they might be running a compromised version of PHP today? Uh, well, the $5 tour of it is PHP got ugly over the last weekend. Um, we had a couple of commits just show up, surprise, uh, introducing what was a very obvious uh, backdoor where any server that would be running a build of PHP with these commits in them, if they sent a header called user agent with two T's on the end, and that user agent header had the string Zerodium and then some PHP code, PHP would just execute that code arbitrarily, no questions asked, uh, bypassing all things. It's just a straight up RCE remote code execution. Uh, the good news is they were caught immediately. Um, the first comment, in fact, was, what are you doing, Rasmus? Because the first commit was under his name. Um, and it was pretty obvious that Rasmus would never commit that. And indeed, he did not. Um, so Nikki just reverted it straight off and cut off Rasmus's access assuming that his um, you know, uh, Git credentials had been compromised in some way, uh, because that is a thing that can happen. And the most prudent thing is to just shut it off. Uh, but then a funny thing happened. Nikki seemed to have reverted his revert, which uh, is very suspicious, uh, because it turns out whoever had uh, compromised Rasmus's account also compromised Nikki's account, uh, or so it would seem from the beginning. Uh, so the next action was, all right, gets off turn off the Git server completely until we figure out what's going on. And of course, revert that revert of the revert again, because yo dog, I heard you like reverts. Let's put a revert in your revert. So uh, we spent some time, I say we, uh, it was largely Nikita did a lot of the uh, post-mortem analysis, but you know, everybody was commenting back and forth on the closed security list as we're trying to figure out just what the heck happened. And uh, we are still investigating um, at one point, we believed that the physical git.php net box might have been compromised. We no longer believe that's the case. Um, we now believe this is actually a much more straightforward, uh, somebody managed to compromise some accounts, uh, possibly through an unrelated um, credential leak uh, that happened to be some shared credentials between sites. We're not 100% sure yet. We're still figuring it out. But... Um, in the meantime, we have paused all uh, new releases of PHP for a couple of weeks just to give us some breathing room. But the bottom line is we don't believe there are any um, compromised commits anywhere in the code base right now. Nobody would have ever gotten a hold of those compromised commits unless they were aggressively pulling from the repo and building constantly. So uh, everybody chill, it's all right. Um, <laughs> but we are doing a sort of a deeper dive into the code base just to be sure and just because you should audit your code base regularly anyway. Um, now, and, you, said, you said that they were caught quickly. Is every single commit reviewed by multiple people? I mean, officially, no. Like, there's, there's not like, you know, it's not like Bob has the job of checking all commits on Thursday and then Alice has a check, you know. It's not like that. But um, fortunately, <laughs> uh, the people who work on the PHP project um, actually just 
kind of like checking commits, seeing what's going on, just keeping an eye on things. Uh, sometimes just code that isn't malicious, but just somebody doesn't agree with will end up getting a reply and saying, why was this committed? Why wasn't this an RFC? Why, you know, um, people care very much about what goes into PHP and what actually makes it into a release. So fortunately, there are already quite a lot of eyes looking out for uh, disagreeable items and are able to catch malicious ones at the same time. Yeah, and I think it's noteworthy to mention this sounds like it was a credential uh, exploit, but these commits were submitted by what we would consider high level PHP core contributor mm -hmm. contributors. And even those are still under the scrutiny of the code review. So these weren't just random people making their first commit out of the blue. These were established committers, but the review process still is, is pretty rock solid in place as far as, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, the code is being looked at. Well, I will say this about the commit. It was a sloppy hack. Like if you're trying to hide your steps, this was not a way to hide your steps. Um, it literally had Zend eval string in the, in the code, which is really not something that any show code should ever be calling unless it's in the CLI handling of the dash R argument. Um, you, there's not a lot of good reason for calling that in the first place. Um, secondly, the title was typo fix, but it's clearly adding a whole bunch of code. So the title didn't even match what was going on in any way. Um, it was just, it was ham fisted and, and, and not well done, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, I think there are definitely names that you would look at and you would say, oh, well, that's Rasmus. You know, he, he's, he's, he cares about PHP. He's not going to do anything mean. Oh, that's Nikki. Nikki's done more for PHP in the past five years than most people have done over the past 20 years. Um, you know, we're going to like maybe not worry about the specifics of what they do so much, but they're still going to look. Um, but it's still interesting. Uh, so I, I, know I understand that... Uh one of the first fixes that was done here was to move to the public GitHub uh, system. Uh, do you think that this is going to help resolve the issue going forward? Um, I think that is just something that we should have done years ago. Um, and this was sort of a forcing function, because as I said, at one point, we believed it was possible that the box itself was compromised. And the most expedient way to uh, deal, deal with that, uh, not having to worry about more effects from that compromise is to just not use that box. And um, I was actually kind of impressed that everybody involved in the process search sort of said, you know what, why are we doing this anyway? Why do we have one more piece of infrastructure that could potentially break? Why are we um, putting it on ourselves to manage a Git server when there is a perfectly competent company full of people out there who will do probably a much better job at this than we do and will respond to uh, you know, brute force attacks against the system much more rapidly than we will. So that was actually a very easy decision. So I know as the team moved to using public GitHub, I've seen some documentation about requiring two-factor authentication on any user accounts that have access. Are, is the community doing anything beyond that to protect the integrity of the code? I know commit signing is something that GitHub allows and the Linux kernel uses commit signing. Is that an additional security feature that the team is looking into? Uh, yeah, so two-factor we did actually turn on before we even started enabling rights. We just said, you know what, this is such a basic bare minimum thing to do is turn on two-factor authentication. Absolutely, we should do that. And it doesn't even get in the way of day-to-day -day commit access because that's all through SSH, which um, the two-factor only really uh, relates to access to the web, which you know you can use for changing keys, but you still need to have the key you have. Um, secondarily, yes, we're definitely discussing commit signing. Uh, I've been commit signing at least as long as I've been doing RM, I think a little bit longer than that. But um, I think there's probably only other, maybe another half a dozen people on the project that were doing commit signing before this. Definitely the majority of commits, you, if you look at PHP source, you don't see a verified tick on them. Um, if we had everybody signing their commits up to this point, it would make looking for suspicious commits much, much easier. Because as soon as you see a commit that's not verified, that's instantly deserving of more scrutiny. And as you're going back through old commits, you can just say, hey, 
verify the signatures on all these commits. And if you see one that either doesn't verify or doesn't have a signature, that's worth more investigation. But we haven't quite pulled the trigger of saying we're going to require um, signing of commits yet. Uh, you had mentioned that there's no formal code review process. It's just sort of a, a volunteer pet peeve based system. Is there a conversation about uh, formalizing a code review or a merge review process? That that actually has been discussed as well. Um, and I shouldn't say there's no code review. Um, just that um, like if, if you present an RFC, it typically comes with an implementation and that code certainly gets reviewed before it even gets voted on typically. Um, so big project level work does get code reviewed, um, but little things like, oh, um, you know, I'm, I'm Dimitri and I'm working on some bit of the JIT and I need to uh, implement this thing. Generally, nobody's looking at his code before it gets committed. And even when it does, most people aren't understanding it anyway. Uh, that's a separate problem that we need to deal with. Uh, but uh, as to should we be requiring code reviews, it is being discussed. I don't think it's being taken quite as positively as commit signing, but it is at least, you know, getting people's opinions in the air. And the idea is rather than give people direct commit access to these Git repos, um, we may decide to say everything must be a PR and it must be approved by one other person. And then you use the merge button. Um, that adds some complexity to our workflows. So it's hard to tell if we're actually going to do that or not. Um, and certainly we don't want to change too many things about our workflow all at once. So that that's still on the maybe pile. Uh, signing certainly seems much more likely. I have a question that actually this might be, uh, Eric, uh, man, you might want to tackle this one as well. Uh, th this whole, we, we've talked about code review and this issue was caught through a manual code review process as well. But are there tools out there that could help automate this process, at least catch some of the more obvious um, attempts? Is there anything like that, that that can be implemented that you're aware of? As far as automated code review, yes, there absolutely are. Um, I personally use tools like Code Climate to do like code quality reviews. You can use PHP Code Sniffer to identify just like code quality overall. But these automated tools also allow you to flag certain functions as requiring additional scrutiny. So like the Zend eval string is something that should never appear. And you can have these automated tools flag if that function ever appears in a diff, you know you need to pay closer attention to what's going on. So uh, Sarah, do you think internals would consider maybe implementing uh, some automated tools or are there automated tools implemented already? Um, so we have, well, we had um, a few things built into uh, our pre -hook, our pre commit hooks on our own Git server, which was something nice about running your own so Git server is you can have server side hooks that you can't have on GitHub. But um, the short version is like, yes, I think I think you wouldn't get much objection to doing things like that, particularly for, uh, as Eric said, looking for the really egregious stuff like this doesn't belong here. Um, I think anything that involves like a base 6040 code might be a little bit suspect because uh, people tend to hide their their stuff in obfuscation through that. Um, doing some weird pointer math might be worth a second look. Um, so yeah, I I don't think anyone would object to it, but there's no discussion about it currently. So a lot of things changed very rapidly this week with the Git server moving and with policies changing and being discussed. But uh, how do these changes actually get decided on and who's in charge of implementing these kinds of changes? Um, well, the short version is that nobody's strictly in charge. Um, the, the sort of default people in charge are the ones who literally have the you know, root access to, to the servers and repositories because they're the ones who can actually implement those changes. Um, this particular issue got discussed on a closed mailing list um, that uh, some of us are part of, but uh, it's, a, it's a pretty small distribution just because of the sensitive nature of it. Like this was a, a direct intrusion. This was something like, all right, um, let's, let's post some logs, you know, without having to worry about redacting them. Let's talk about these things and let's figure out what is actually happening on the system and then give a summary uh, with, for some transparency later on. And I believe Nikita's still working on that post. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I mean, in this case, this decision was probably down to about half a dozen people by the time the decision at least to move to GitHub was made. What was the what was the reason for having your own Git server to begin with? Uh, GitHub did not exist. Oh, that's uh, a good reason. That, that's the short version. It's <laughs> an I, easy one. Uh, you know, the PHP project has existed for well over twenty years at this point. Um, like mm -hmm. it predates SourceForge. It's that old. Uh, obviously, it was like CVS originally. Um, then we moved to SVN at some point because it had advantages over CVS. And then we moved to Git. God, it must have been at least a dozen years ago by now. Um, and I think GitHub might have just been existing at that point, but they were very young. They were not. They were definitely not the sort of market leader in in source code hosting that they are these days. Um, and we did have a desire to be able to put some additional controls on our repositories. Um, we have something called the Karma system, which is basically a way of saying like, okay, you have access to our Git server, but you can't just commit anything you want. Um, at one point, um, you could have access to most of the PHP source tree, but not the engine, because the engine was considered a little bit more specialized, a little bit more um, specific. So you had to show some, demonstrate some, uh, uh, skill with that. Uh, eventually, we just said, okay, fine. If you have access to PHP source, you have access to the whole thing. But um, we have people who would have access to documentation only without changing code. Uh, that's something we can give out much more freely because the consequence of making the documentation wrong is, you know, that the documentation is unhelpful, not that servers are being compromised. Um, and then the websites uh, can be a much smaller uh, category of, of people than the source code as a whole. So. Uh, these days, GitHub has a much more robust uh, access control list system. It's got teams. We can we can set things things up the way we want them to be. So, the justification for needing our own server has gone way down. Um, with coverage of this evolving over the last couple of days in various online places that normally may not pay attention to PHP, what are some of the things you've seen that they got right and May, maybe got wrong uh, uh, that you'd like to set straight. So I've had my own little war room uh, window of browser tabs open, watching articles come out. And actually, most of them have been pretty good about their coverage. Um, and I attribute that to the amount of transparency that we've tried to maintain through this of posting out things to the internals list saying, look, this happened. Here's what happened. Here's what we know so far. And moving on from there. If you look at the changes to Git workflow uh, thread that's on the internals list right now. I put that in quotes because I feel like that really buries the lead of what happened. Um, you will see a lot of just frank honesty of like, well, okay, yeah, the, this is an intrusion and here's what we know so far. Um, so the, the articles by and large have done a pretty good job of it. Um, the one that actually quoted me managed to spell my name right, which is fantastic. That never happens. Um, uh, there were a couple, I think, that uh, slightly click-baited um, the, the nature of the intrusion um, and made it sound like there was a vulnerability in PHP that allowed the intrusion to happen. Uh, point in fact, we had no PHP running on that box except for the pre-commit hooks, uh, and it turns out those were not involved in, in the intrusion. Um, it was more likely um, some specifics of how we were running our Git instance. Um, which is not written in PHP, just spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, they, they've been pretty accurate, accurate actually, because I mean, what else more is there to report than what happened? Uh, what is your recommended way of people uh, getting news about PHP internals, things like that, um, potentially news sites or an official blog, uh, podcasts? Well, I always listen to the PHP Ugly podcast. Um, no, uh, uh, God, how, how, how should we, I mean, obviously the internals mailing list is the, the source of truth for a lot of these things. Um, keeping an eye on what's going on in the RFCs on, on the wiki. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would probably go to podcasts next because podcasts tend to do a good job of picking out the relevant bits instead of like, um, you know, the 300 
emails on bike shedding, what the attributes operator should look like. Um, you can you can get that summed up much better by people who have time to read through. I, I understated it at 300. It was 500 emails in that thread. Um, and I'm not exaggerating. Uh, so, yeah. Listen, hey, kids, listen to the PHP Ugly podcast. <laughs> Tell your friends. I would jump in here and recommend Derek's internals podcast is really good for keeping up on changes because he'll interview uh, people who have RFCs and uh, contributions coming up. Um, and they do a fairly decent tech dive into it without overwhelming you in about mm -hmm. 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, his format is basically to ask the person to Eli5 their their RFC, even if he knows exactly what it is. He's just like, all right, tell, tell me what you're doing. And then he steps back, which is nice. So uh, Eric Mann, can we assume uh, next month's PHP Architect is going to have a security corner <laughs> article on this? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is definitely something we want to, we, we want to not just draw attention to, but allow folks to understand the lessons learned. So I, I guess my, my next question to you, Sarah, would be what, what has the team learned? What does the community learn that would be most effective for individual application developers? Obviously not every developer is shepherding and building their own programming language, but there's likely some insights and some wisdom that we've gleaned from this experience that the average app developer should keep in mind as they continue to move forward? I mean, there, I, I, could, I could highlight some generic lessons that we should all keep in mind and remember, but probably know already and forget. Um, keep your, keep your uh, infrastructure up to date. Um, I, uh, I, I can say this because other people have noticed in the Git web instance, we were not running the most recent version of Git uh, or the web UI. Um, it, that wasn't the thing that got us, but we should have been keeping it up to date. Um, know what you can and can't do. And in this case, um, what we can't do is run all of our own infrastructure. Um, not because we're incapable, but because we have a limited number of people and very few of them are actually interested in keeping a Git server up to date and healthy and monitoring its health over time. So acknowledge the fact that hey, this is not something we should be in the business of doing. We've got people who can do a better job of it. So um, that, that applies to applications as well, I think. And, and that is, you know what? You don't have to, I don't know, write your own database just because you're building a CRM. Like there are other better fix solutions out there. So you mentioned earlier that there's been a, a pause on releases uh, for a couple of weeks. There, there's no reason to suspect there's any more issues. This is just kind of kind of a precautionary step to take that time to evaluate the code base again, correct? Yeah, um, the notices on PHPNet, um, I wrote that, but it was written in committee with a bunch of other people. Um, my original text on there was, we are exercising an abundance of caution. Um, there is no reason to believe that if we released um, the actual uh, final versions of the RCs that were prepared a week and a half to two weeks ago, that we would have any problem. But why do that? Why not spend one extra fortnight just double checking everything, making sure that we're not going to deliver compromised uh, uh, a compromised runtime into people's hands? Like, let's just play it safe. So, so in terms of runtime, I know a lot of the, the early reports of this were saying, hey, PHP was hacked. There's this vulnerability in PHP. And I know there are a lot of communities where folks are typically used to, and I'm going to use a subversion term a little bit outdated, but running trunk in production because they like to, to live dangerously. Is that a common thing that people do in the PHP community? Do people download like the latest source code, immediately cut a binary and run it? Or should folks be waiting for a completely cut, completely polished, release signed, like cryptographically signed binary that's an official distribution from the team? And if so, are there like continuous integration pipelines in place today for the latest PHP source that people can get the latest trusted version? Or is that something that's on a more regular cadence with actual release signatures? So I don't know anybody who's pulling nightly to, to build PHP, but there are definitely um, folks out there, like I believe 
well, I don't know if I should name names, but there, there is a, um, there's a cloud provider who I believe is uh, pulling on a fairly frequent basis um, versions of PHP to build and run in their testing environment. They don't throw it into production because that would be insane, but they do build this and throw all of their CI that they can at it just to make sure that if they pulled that version into production, it would be fine. Um, and also so they can report bugs because they they want us to fix bugs in our runtime because it's less issues for them. Um, God, what was the rest of the question? You piled up a lot on there. Um, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, the reason I know about these is because when I started backfilling for Joe Watkins on the 7.1 release, um, I didn't immediately just throw my GPG key into the 7.1 list of release managers. And they were specifically looking for uh, signatures from the named release managers. So they're like, hey, your signature verifies, but you're not actually a 7.1 release manager. So I want an answer for this. Um, absolutely, if you're, you know, if you're concerned about what you're going to see, you should be checking those signatures anytime you download a tarball to build. Um, but I think most people are probably going to want to wait for their distributions to do the actual binary building for them because distribution can be very opinionated about what versions of libraries and things like that. When, when I was actually maintaining services, I would rebuild PHP myself every couple of minor patch releases. Um, but that was work I didn't have to do. And it turns out I've learned that lesson is I, that's not a thing that I have to do. And that's, so that's not a thing I should do. Like I should let somebody who's putting a lot of time and thought into, uh, how to build this right and how to deliver a good version that maybe they've reviewed as well uh, is a much better and safer thing to do. Um, so folks on the PHP project are going to be scouring for bad commits. Folks who are building these packages, they're probably going to be scouring for bad code as well. So you're going to get a lot more eyes on it if you take uh, binaries from somebody whose job it is to build that. Well, and to be fair, PHP is also a lot better about having those binaries built now back in the day that's what we did was we built them source yeah yeah <laughs> now it's just easier yeah when i when i say you know when i was maintaining this this infrastructure i am talking like late 90s early aughts um and <laughs> you know i think debian had binaries but they were usually like two or three miners old it was not and in those days a miner was not a yearly effect event it was a three or four yearly event so mm -hmm. we're, we're definitely in a better space <laughs> these days uh something else i think that uh, probably bears mentioning if you know the details of this breach um the 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 secret word that was included in core uh related back to a security research group who actually has publicly come out and denounced it and said hey this was not us if it was us we would have said something this was not us correct uh, yes, they did. In fact, they, they sent that in a tweet. They said, props to whoever put our name in your hack uh, for trying to get attention or whatever it was like that. And I'm actually inclined to believe them personally, um, because like I said, this, um, this backdoor was sloppy AF. It was not the kind of thing that's meant to avoid detection. And if you're going to put that kind of a thing in, you're probably going to be sloppy about uh, attribution bits. And I, I, I actually am inclined, inclined to think that the folks at Zeronium would not be that sloppy. I don't know if you can answer this or not, but I think. <laughs> are you looking for the person to pursue any sort of legal action? Or is it just, it was a hack, it happens, fix and move on? There's been no mention of that. Um, I think it would not be a, I personally, not, not speaking for the PHP group, I personally think it would probably be a good idea to at least notify um, authorities in the right jurisdiction about it. But the trouble with these things is that, well, which jurisdiction is even the right one here? Um, right. You know, we could let the FBI know and they're probably going to say, hey, based on the information you're able to give us, we think this came from somewhere else. Um, and mm -hmm. What I will tell you is that we, I don't know how much I want to say about this, but uh, we have 
yeah, we, mm, yeah, we, we don't have a solid way of knowing even what country this came from or even what region is, is all I'll say. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and it's not Maybe because I... we want to hide that. It's just because we are still collecting information and I don't want to get false information out there. So absolutely. Gotcha. That makes sense. And Maybe an, uh, another question, and again, I don't know if you would have an answer for this or not. I'm just curious. PHP is a massive language. There are a lot of Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies that are very dependent on PHP. Just mm -hmm. curious, have any big names stepped up and offered any assistance in this? Or is everybody just kind of just staying back and letting internals do their thing? Uh, not in a context that I've seen. Um, like nobody's explicitly come out and saying, Hey, we want to like, you know, put our engineers toward or something like that. Um, I will lay good money that JetBrains has told Nikki to just go and fix this. And that's your only job right now. Um, not that they generally tell him what to do anyway. Um, he has certainly been putting a lot of his time on it. So I will, I will at least prop Jet's brains on that, that, uh, they've, they've been funding Nikki for all this time and, and, uh, can be considered to be helping with the effort. Um, but uh, I think everybody's still in a let's wait and hear what um, the postmortem turns up sort of a, a phase. That's fair. I think that's that's very fair. Not, not too many cooks in the kitchen. It's like, let's see if they need help first before we offer any help sort of approach. Yeah. Uh, I've just got one more question. If you were to be quoted or soundbited, what is it that you would want to say directly about the situation? Well, I'm pretty sure it's not what the register quoted me as saying. Um, not that the quote was was you know misattributed or anything, but it just really made me sound like an elitist asshole, um, excuse me, an, an elitist jerk. Uh, it was something to the effect of like, why don't we sign our commits? It's kind of like it's hard. Um, which actually I stand by. Um, but if I were to be soundbited or quoted, it would be that, uh, you know, poop happens. Um, I don't say that to minimize the impact of this because this has been um, a really a, a really fraught time for, for all of us who, who care deeply about PHP. Um, I, I'm, I'm a bit shook, honestly, uh, that this has even happened. But at the end of the day, you know, thing, things are going to go wrong and it is just upon us to, you know, pick up the pieces and, you know, do our best to, to, to dig out of it instead of just sitting here thinking like, oh God, how did we let this happen? So let's just- If you it. haven't been, in, if you have not been involved in any sort of hack, it just means you haven't been in the industry long enough. It happens to all of us in one way or another. If Things nobody's happen. trying to take you down, it means you don't matter. <laughs> yeah. That, that when I saw harsh. this, when I saw this come in across in internals on Sunday, and I, I've been keeping a particularly close eye on internals lately. But when I saw this pop <laughs> pop through the the email, I'm like, this is going to be a bad week. <laughs> I yeah, just you, just knew right then. <laughs> are you sure you want to take care of the eight point run release now? <laughs> like, the cursed branch. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I'm ready okay. for you, it. You, you brought it up. That that's going to lead us down a whole other direction. Currently, you're looking for volunteers to be release manager of eight one. Mm -hmm. Some of us on this call may have stepped up to volunteer. What is that process? Is it a voting process? And if so, who who does the voting? Um, yeah, so uh, as you say, so, somebody on this call is, uh, is, has thrown their hat in the rings, but his initials happen to be Eric Ben Johnson. Um, <laughs> so yes, every year PHP releases a new branch, new minor version, whatever you want to call it. And the 8.1 release cycle is going to start in about June. So we need some release managers to shepherd that release out. And every year we call for volunteers, like who wants to do this? Um, ideally, we have two release managers for every branch. Excuse me, too much soda. Uh, and typically we want one of those to be somebody with experience who's done it before, who knows where the sharp edges are. And we want one of those to be a rookie who's not done it before so that they can become experienced so that we can get more 
uh, people who know what they're doing in the pool to, to do this in the future. And uh, this year I got the uh, call for volunteers out pretty early and um, apparently somebody started talking about it on their podcast that made it uh, even more widely known uh, that we were looking for volunteers. So right now we have eight rookie volunteers uh, to select from for our release. Is that a record? Process. I, that is almost certainly a record, yes. Uh, <laughs> prior to 7.0, we didn't even have this paired setup. We just had, hey, pick somebody from internals and it's your job and deal with it and that's it. Um, so in the, in the world of formalized, we've definitely only had uh, two official uh, release managers active and typically no more than four or five volunteers uh, for any given release. Uh, so we've got eight rookies and uh, Joe Watkins has graciously volunteered to mentor some rookies. So we have our veteran now and we have enough that we could actually start the selection process. The selection process is a vote. It is uh, not specified in the release process uh, RFC how that vote takes place. But for the past few elections, we've been using what's called single transferable vote, which means that you can say what your preference order is. And I might say that uh, my first preference is, I'm gonna pick a name randomly, Adiel Christo. And my second preference is Gunnard Engelbreth. And my third F preference is Harm Smith. And somewhere way down the bottom is Eric. Um, and when we actually go to tally the votes, we're gonna look at everybody's preferences in order. And we're gonna say, well, in this first round, um, Harm did not get enough votes to even be in the ranks. So we're gonna to toss him out. And then we're going to look at the second choices of anyone who voted for him and on and on and on until we get two people who have what's called a quorum of uh, votes going for them. It's a much more complicated system than first past the post, but hopefully it winds up with a, uh, a better satisfaction rate in terms of having somebody that you want versus somebody you don't want. Um, at the end of the day, it's a little bit popularity contest. Uh, I do hope that all of the uh, people standing put out a statement saying like, hey, here's my background. Here's why I love PHP. Here's the skills I bring to the table. But, um, you know, like most elections, it's going to mostly come down to popularity. Um, since Joe's the only veteran, um, we're just going to basically give him a guaranteed seat. But we're going to go for three release managers here because he's volunteered to mentor two of them. So we still have two proper seats up for grabs amongst the rookies. And uh, that election will happen later this month, um, probably uh, the week of the 12th. Um, that hasn't been 100% decided. And uh, yeah, once they're selected, they're going to start going through the alpha, beta, and RC process and tell people to get their damn uh, RFCs into voting and merged before the feature freeze. And then uh, make sure we have a, a nice version of, of PHP to come out in late November to early December. I'll let Eric go with, with PHP 8.1 this time. Let me know how that ends up, and then maybe I'll volunteer for the next one. Well, then we can have, like, back-to-back -back Eric's. Oh, and if, if Eric got 8.1 and became a vet, no, he wouldn't be able to mentor you yet. He has to go through all three years. Yeah. I was just thinking it would be fun to have a double Eric team. I, I, and I actually, the, even the fact that I even volunteer, you and Gabriel have all the credit for that. I spent a long time on a Zoom call with the two of you when uh, 8.0 was being released. It, you can ask Oscar and John will vouch for me. I, I rambled on and on about how inspiring Gabriel was, especially because of how short of a time he'd been with PHP. And then he took this on in the positive experience he kept referring to that he, he had uh, and being a release manager, I'm like, it just seemed all of a sudden seemed achievable to me. Yeah, the, the good news is that um, we have a large enough um, pool of release managers now, and we have a dedicated distribution list for talking amongst release managers about release related, related issues that, you know, if you come into this and you've got an issue, and for whatever reason, Joe's not available to answer your question, all of the other release managers are, and one of us is going to have a useful answer to give to you. So, I, I say generically, you are, you're you're not, you haven't been elected yet, boy. And you get on the secret mailing list. I mean, it's it's 
secret. Like there's nothing really private happening there. It's just meant to keep noise away from, from other general traffic. Uh, or to keep other noise out of that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think the most, the most secret thing happening on that list has been related to the breach where we said, hey, does it make sense to, to pause the releases for a bit? Um, and even that was a short conversation. Because everybody's like, yeah, yeah, it kind of does. All right, I don't want to cut anybody off if they have more um, they want to ask. I, I know we're all over the country here, and I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, just a thumbs up. Are we good? Does anybody I, have any more? I have one it. question. You said, um, well, no, the, I know the documentation team or project just moved to GitHub as well, um, coincidentally. What other infrastructure is still being operated by PHP uh, or by, by internals? And are there any plans uh, or discussions that can stem out of this uh, for well, moving well, those? Thing, yeah, the big thing about Docs is that it was an SVN to Git uh, move. But um, at that point, at least, the source of truth, sort of the home for Docs was still on the Git PHP net server. Like it, it, it didn't become GitHub until this event when everything got moved over to GitHub. But um, like the other languages uh, are still in SVN. So we do still have to do some work to move them from SVN now to, excuse me, now to GitHub. Um, there's quite a lot of places around various sites and bits of code where we need to say, stop looking at Git PHPNet, start looking at GitHub. Um, there's, there's a lot of broken pieces lying on the floor that just need to be collected up. But in terms of the infrastructure that we're going to continue operating for now, at least, um, the bug server is our own installation. Um, somebody's going to make sure that's got latest versions of all packages on it uh, and security updates. Uh, and we've been taking care of the PHP code that's been on there. Uh, if you look at it, some of it's even using seven specific features. Um, but we do we do keep an eye on on these code bases from time to time. Uh, we've got a system called QA. QA.php.net is used for, as you can guess, basic quality assurance tasks. Uh, that's probably going to stick around for a while. Um, People.php.net. Did anyone even know that existed? Uh, there's nothing particularly sensitive on there. It's literally just, you know, you can put up some profile information in your PHPNet account and just say, hi, this is who I am. Um, gosh, what else is out there? The listserv, we, we run our own mail server, which I'm not particularly comfortable with. I think we should actually look into finding somebody else to do that. But uh... what about Pear? Is that still? <laughs> oh, yeah, Pear, Pear and Pickle, of course. Um, I think are the same machine technically, but um, they're still out there. They're probably going to stay out there for a while. But I think as a whole, um, you know, internals devs in the community, we probably need to have a come to Jesus conversation about what we see as the future for Pear and Pickle. Um, I think they were both good ideas that never really reached their potential. Um, Pear in particular has now, I think, largely been supplanted by Composer and Packagist. There's not a lot left for Pear to do. Uh, Pickle's a little bit different because there's no, like, there's not a lot of uh, culture around building third-party extensions in general, be it through Pickle or through any other source. So hopefully somebody can come up with an idea about what to do about that and post it to the internals list and uh, get a conversation started. And when I smile like this, I'm trying to look directly at you and saying, it's you. You're the one I want to start this conversation. Whoever's watching this right now. That that was that's a good follow up because I wanted to ask how if someone's listening, how can they get involved in internals besides uh, following the mailing list? What, what would be the next step to posting to the mailing list? Yeah, just start you know up. What? Yeah, um, I, I will apologize in advance. Not every idea is met with open arms. Um, some ideas are met with, we've heard this 37 times this week and we're tired of hearing it, or this was uh, poorly thought through. But um, just sorry in advance for those replies. Some of them might come from me, um, but post anyway. 
like if you've got an idea, if you think you can make PHP better and safer and more reliable, by all means, bring it up. If you have trouble subscribing to the mailing list, because the web form that's on PHPNet doesn't always work right, because sending mail is hard, um, you can send an email to internals-subscribe at listphpnet, just an empty email, and the, the mailing list server will respond to you correctly, um, because the web form's not quite that great. How and, do you uh, keep? How do you keep up with all the mail on the mailing list? Gmail filters. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest. There's a lot of them that just immediately bypass inbox, and I never look at them. But uh, Gmail does a pretty good job of threading, so I keep an eye on the threads that I care about. Um, yeah, but like like you do in any job, some mails you're going to be able to read, some you're not. My work inbox. God, it must get a thousand mails a day, and most of them never hit my inbox. <laughs> Sorry, boss. <laughs> <laughs> and to kind of uh, make sure we're sharing the information with everybody involved, uh, you, you mentioned people.php.net. You also mentioned anybody interested in becoming a release manager, posting their profiles. Would that be the place for them to post their profile? Um, no, I, I, I wouldn't even say a profile, just a statement, just, just an introductory and an introduce yourself, especially if you haven't been particularly active on the list yet. Um, I would put that directly on the internals mailing list. Um, probably use some square brackets with RM in them just so that people can spot it very easily and just say, hi, I'm Eric Van Johnson and I think PHP is cool and I want to help contribute to making it a better place. And I think you said- Okay, you don't, have to, you don't have to recite my email, whatever. <laughs> um, I did link the original uh, volunteer messages for everybody from the wiki, which is wiki.php.net slash two, uh, wait, what is that URL? Uh, oh, where's my mouse? To do slash, to do slash, slash PHP. PHP, yeah, slash PHP one, yeah. I had, I had doubts. Uh, so there's a link for every person to the email where they said they volunteer. Um, if they, if you have a secondary um, uh, sort of introductory message, we can also add that to that same list, uh, so people can look at those in one spot and be able to to pick appropriately. This is the page where the voting will happen as well. And if you already have Wiki Karma, you can add it yourself. And how do you get Wiki Karma? Um, it's not hard, honestly. Uh, you just uh, send, you create an account, which you can do from php.net under Get Involved. Uh, there's a spot to create your own VCS account, uh, which won't actually get you access to version control. It's 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 labeled inappropriately. Um, but then you send an email to internals list and say, hey, I would like karma for the wiki system for x reason and it's not hard to get doesn't automatically give you a vote all right well one more vote we good anybody else have any other questions sarah as always really appreciate you taking the time everybody take it out you mentioned php ugly a few times i appreciate it but we also have a php architect here with eric mann and oscar uh, and John and I as well. So uh, thanks, Arctic everybody. It's a great place to keep up on the goings on in PHP. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, wait. I should have got wait, wait my orange save my job. <laughs> uh, and again, anybody listening, this is a perfect example of the PHP community. Uh, Sarah reached out to me. I reached out to Oscar. This is what the PHP community is about, the transparency, getting information out there and making sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, I hope you appreciate this. I hope you appreciate the volunteers like Sarah uh, and everybody, everybody in PHP internals. Like I said, I've been keeping a close eye on the internals email emailing list, and there's so much conversation going on there. There's so much caring and, and passion about the PHP language in there. Um, as a PHP developer, you really may never get that insight unless you subscribe to internals. So I would recommend doing that. And with that, we will wrap this up. Thanks, everybody, for joining, and thanks for listening. Thanks, everyone.